we're going to address the comb now. Um, I hope everyone's got their paper. 1200 is best for it's it's not as grainy so it's not going to take off as much and it's nice and smooth so it leaves a really good finish on your comb. I've got some 280 grain here. You get all the stuff from my tin. <clears throat> so this is a bit more grainier but not as rough as cutter paper. You can use cutter paper if you like but this stuff won't take as much off and and then when you use your fine paper after the 280, um, you don't have to do as much work. Okay, and then the other third thing that you need, the most important part, is your comb. Okay, so like the video said, I've, I'm checking my comb after I've ground it, and then I'm going to run it over my hand. I'm going to run it over my hand like this. Can you see that? Okay. Feel, feeling it for any scratches, I'm going to check the tip of it to look for any white balls. If there's any missing, I'm going to create that white ball again. Let's say you've got a ground out, any combs ground out, and it starts pricking your finger when you run your finger over it. That means it needs to be, you need to put this stuff all over it. Um, I try and leave the bottom and top teeth for last. So, what I mean by that is that with your 1200, with that cover comb that I used in the previous video, um, there's the gaps in between the teeth are too big to be running your paper over the top. But with a, with a flat comb, you can actually, at a 90 degree angle, okay, so the comb's going to be, the teeth are going to be like this because it's ground out. They're going to be like that. One's your cutting edge, one's where the bevel is in the back of the comb. So what we're going to do is we're going to whack the top of that sharp bit of the tooth off. So it's going to come in like, it's going to end up like that, pretty much. Nice and square. Okay. Just nice and lightly with your 280 or something a bit less, a um, bit more grainier than your 1200. And you're just going to run it over the top like this to make a flat spot. Okay, give it about 10 strokes and then check it. Okay, you don't want to push down too hard because it's just going to rip your paper. So we're just running over the top like this at a 90 degree angle. If you don't know what 90 degree is, it's pretty much a left hand turn. So you got 90 degrees straight across. Okay, so we've whacked the top off. Now it's going to look square. Your tooth's going to look square when you're looking at it like this. Okay. Now with your 1200, just make it fit in your fingers. I like to have my front fingers holding it and then my two back ones are inside it. And it leaves a little flat spot on the front of your paper. That way, when I'm working my each tooth, the paper's not touching any other teeth. You're just working one tooth at a time. And because you've squared up the tooth, when we hit it from the back, we're just trying to take that corner off. Okay? We're just going to do the back at, the, at first. And then we're just going to whack the corner off. Give it about 10 strokes. And then move on to your next tooth. Ten strokes. I'm not actually counting, but that was somewhere around there. Then move on to your next one. Okay. You don't. So we're not going to touch the front at the moment. We're not going to roll right over. We're just doing the back corner. Okay, so we're just trying to create a smoother round, a, a smoother corner on the back of the tooth. That's all we're doing at the moment. Okay. And then 
as you work your way along. You can stop halfway and check and make sure all these teeth are the same. Just the back of the teeth. Okay, you can wear the the um, magnifying goggles, they help. They're actually really good. But I think mouse has stolen my pair, I think. I had a pair up until I mouse borrowed them. Now, obviously, if you're in a hurry during the run, you want to take more steel off, then you can run it back. But just be careful because it can take off too much, okay? Sometimes you might only have, let's say you might have warriors in your pouch and you find that you're, you're picking up a little bit of skin with your warrior because they are 3.5 or you might have an accelerate on and it's picking up a little bit of skin well you can do the same but with your 1200 you can do it like during the run try it out just to put a bit more bevel on it okay so I've gone that way now everything's looking smick they're all looking consistent running over the back it's a nice shape now okay now we're going to do the tip so so when we've run it from the back the tip of that tooth the highest point is at the tip now okay when it's sitting like that the highest point so the point poking out this way the most is the tip. So now we're going to roll that paper over the top. Now you don't have to do this much. I'm only going to give it three per tooth. Okay, making sure that that paper is not touching any other teeth as it's working on that one. Sometimes you might have a comb that grinds out on one side and you've got two teeth that don't come up, uh, that are ground out, sorry. And this is what you can do with it. Okay. Just checking it again. She's still feeling a bit scratchy. Now in the video I talked about seeing the white ball on the tip. Okay, the white ball is actually the scallop that you can see. And it pays to have good lighting. I've got two fluorescent lights in here. Got the sun coming through the window, sun coming in the front. I can see everything about this comb. My eye's only 30 years old, so I've got good eyesight. And I can see that the white, there isn't enough white ball on the tips of these teeth. So I'm going to give her another work over, another three. And like I said, you're better off doing not enough than too much. So if it needs another three, then give it another three. What you don't want to do is do this, do the tip too much, then you have to bring the back and the top again over because you'll end up with drop points. Okay. Don't forget I left the bottom and top tooth to last. Okay, now to check for the white ball, you just hold it up straight. You just hold it up straight like that. Can't really see with this light, with the sun in there, it's too bright. But if you're looking at it straight on, you should be able to pick up the white ball pretty easy. You grab a new one that's a comb that's ground out and it won't have any of those white balls on the top. Okay, now I'm happy with that shape. I'm happy with the back. I'm happy with how it looks on top. And I'm happy how it looks over the front. Just checking for drop points. If you've got a drop point, then you just work that tip to bring that tip in line with the top of your teeth. Okay, so what's happened here, because you've done all this work like this, 
in the video you can see the teeth if you look at the teeth close up they're going to be square okay now you, you picture that trying to part wool a square tooth parting wool it won't have the same effect as a spear going through you know a spear shaped tooth going through the wall okay so we're going to whack those corners off and to do that i'm going to have this paper nice and flat okay and then i'm just going to get inside each tooth and you just do one side at a time work all your way all the way down and you flip it over and then you do the other side but the opposite way with the paper okay so this is flat and i'm coming up from the back to the front work your way along same amount of strokes now you don't want to be going if it's like that you don't want to be rolling it right over the top yet okay all we're trying to do is just whack the corners off we don't need to be going on top of the tooth yet or into the teeth too much i'll show you that's a that's another level but i can possibly show that tonight now if you've used your cutter paper and you've really got hard on that tooth they're going to be super thick looking down this way if you're looking at it straight on like that they're going to be super thick okay so another way to thin them out if you haven't got a bright boy let's just stick that paper in there and just work it so you're trying to bring the tooth is like that so we're trying to bring the tooth in like this okay so it's from that to this now that's going to enter wall a lot better than that isn't it so we're trying to work it like that okay Obviously, you might be struggling to get the paper in there without touching the sides or like without touching the opposite tooth or you're dropping the paper or you can't hold it properly. In time, you'll get better at it. Okay. So we flip it over and then you run it from the back to the front. If you're in a hurry during the run, just work that paper This is the same as using a bright boy. And that might be another video later. But that's more for the advance. If you want to use a bright boy to thin your combs out, try using a broken comb or some of your dagging combs that you're not going to use again. Definitely broken comb. Like if you've broken the bottom tooth, you can still paper it up because you're not going to use it again. You can paper it up to make a shape and then you like the same method that we used and then put it on the bright boy and and try and spin it out just have a play around with it um that's the best way to learn that's how I, what i found um back in the old days back in the old days they used to um i remember hearing snow quinn and them used to jack their car up to buff their cones like jack their car up, put it in neutral and then rub it on the back wheel that's how they used to buff their cones up i heard and then all um, of a sudden um, someone started coming to the shows with a bit of leather and that's how the leather come about i've got a bit of a question for you stacy that's just come in um that i'll ask as we're going because i think it was topical um if you bring one tooth down too much do you have to bring the other teeth down to the same level um yes and no because you cannot if it's come down too low you can try bringing all the rest to this to that or you can just change the shape of that one tooth uh, if that makes any sense um and and that's that's the important thing about not taking too much off um you, 
like I said, you're better off not taking enough off than too much because that, that's when um, mistakes happen. Same as with when you're rubbing the heartier grip on the tips, you got to make sure your strokes are consistent instead of low. If you're hitting it and then coming off at the end, you know, the, the start of that comb is going to be a lot different to the end of that comb. So, yeah, the answer that, to that question is, is probably yes. Um, probably yes. If you want all your teeth to be consistent, then yes. Um, yeah, and to avoid that, just take your time. Yeah. Okay, so we've thinned out. To check how thick the teeth are, you're looking straight down. You're looking for the white ball again. You'll see that it's a lot thicker than before. Okay. If it's if it's at a thickness that you think you're happy with, then try it. If it doesn't work, if, if you're pushing too much, then you, it needs more paper or it needs the bright boy. Okay. Um, you can compare it with a new comb. Check your one with a new comb and check the thickness of the teeth. Um, yep. So we're doing the same on the other side. Okay. Now all I've got left is the top and bottom tooth. So what I'll do here is the top and bottom tooth, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. That's all they need. They don't need much. Okay. And yes, you can thin out with this heartier grip. Okay, that does take off a lot more, but like I said before, you're better off taking not enough than too much. But as you get more and more experience, then yeah, feel free to use this this heartier paper. But remember, from back to front. After you've used this paper, you use the 1200. Because what's happened here is that because of the rough sandpaper, it's left minute. This is how particular you should be. It's left minute scratches in your teeth. You might even feel them. With, if you rub your nail over them, you might even feel them. So you need your 1200 paper. You know, this is what I'm talking about is about having your gear at its optimum. Like, don't be satisfied with your comb having that little bit of roughness on it. Don't do it. It could cost you one, two sheep, you know, a run. And you might not even know it. You know, you use gear from some guys that are real experienced and their combs just like, just go like, hot knife through butter that's because they've got their combs sorted okay smooth all around you can buy um this is how meticulous you can be you can buy wooden um stones well wooden they go on your spinner to get the manufactured ruts out of the in between your teeth okay if you look at any comb especially new ones that are shiny they've got little ridgy bits inside the teeth okay well that's what those wooden um buffing wheels are for to get those out mm, that's how meticulous you can be okay so i'm satisfied with the back with the tip i'm satisfied with how thin the teeth are now i haven't done the outside teeth yet okay I'm happy with them 
Now I'll either stick her on the buffer or give her a good strop. Okay, strop and shines, they don't need much. And then now I've got my comb, I'm going to grind her and she'll be ready for tomorrow. Um, if you've got chip teeth, sometimes you might throw it into your gear pot too hard, don't even realize, and then you run your finger over it and oh, there's a chip on the back. Get that paper, work that paper. You want that running through that sheep's wool it's most optimum and you want that sheep as comfortable as it can be and if you're pushing wool if the comb's not parting the wool properly if the comb's digging in from being the bevels too long or uh, the teeth haven't been done up properly then it's only costing you time okay and time is the essence when you're sharing uh, time is everything time is where you make your money time is ultimately it's going to feed your family so the more you can spend out here on your gear, um, the better your combs are going to go. Um, clean your hand pieces out, all that stuff. This is where it happens. This is the start of it. Okay. So yeah, thanks, guys.